Bonjour Jenny Engineers, welcome to my problem a day series. In this video, we're going to do problem on dynamics using friction factor. Now, if you're for the first time and you just want to learn about engineering or just how to engineer a better life, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Now, let's get started. Oh yeah, everybody now. Okay guys, so we're giving this system and we want to find the velocity at point B. So this block is initially at point A, then it moves, and then at B, at position B, we want to find the velocity. Now, the first thing we need to do here is first draw the free body diagram and the acceleration diagram. I'm going to show you guys a little bit what that is. But if you really get in the habit of doing acceleration diagram in dynamics, you will never uh, do mistakes, especially when it comes to the negative and positive signs. And it really makes the problem way easier. So for the free body diagram, we need to identify all our forces. So first, let's calculate this data right here. I'd rather use this data, especially in these type of problems, just makes it easier. So instead of using the triangle, so we have data is equal to tangent inverse of 3 over 4, 36.9. So that's your angle here. So let's determine the forces, like we said. So first I have the normal force, which is always perpendicular to the surface. So we're going to have to have normal force going this way. See you guys how it is perpendicular to the surface. Now I'm going to have mg, which is the weight, the external force, pulling down. And then we have the friction force. Because my block is actually going this way, so my friction force is going the opposite. It's always the opposite of motion. So I'm going to have friction force going this way. So let's draw that in our free body diagram. So I'm going to do free body diagram. So I'm going to have my x and y axis this way. So this is positive x. This is positive y. So we have the weight this way. I have the normal force going this way right friction force going this way and if this is theta that means this is going to be our theta reason that is i explained this in one of my previous videos in statics but if you haven't watched it yet i'm going to go over it here but here's what pretty much we have so if you have a triangle like this right and then you have 90 here this is 36 right 36.9 now this angle cannot be 36 because this won't give you the sum of 180, right? But the angle next to it would actually have 36.9. It's just something that we you would have learned probably in geometry or trigonometry. Okay, so we said this is theta. Now let's break down our components, the, the weight component. So we have x and y, right? So this is going to be the weight times sine theta because it's the opposite. And then this one, it's going to be the weight times cosine theta. Again, guys, this is just trigonometry. Remember, cosine theta, let me write it down, is equal to what? So we have adjacent divided by hypotenuse. And then we have sine theta is usually the opposite over hypotenuse. And that's what we pretty much use here. Opposite, we use sine theta adjacent we use cosine theta so this is your free body diagram all these forces now let's do the acceleration diagram so it's really easy acceleration diagram let me do it in a different color so this is 80 let's call it 80 and so this is what we have so i have the mass this is my mass right and it's pretty much going this way this is my acceleration is going this way so that's our uh diagram here's another thing we should actually do you know how i mentioned here this is positive x actually let's not do that let's do this is positive x just because it's easier you we would still get the same answer if we pick this but i always like to pick my positive direction the same as acceleration just because it's easier so this is going to be positive direction because that's where my acceleration is going this block right here, it's accelerating down. Now, all we have to do is use our equations and we can start solving this. To calculate the velocity, we're going to use one of these equations right here. It's on page 76, right? It's actually the third equation. It says v naught squared plus v naught squared plus 2a naught times x minus x naught. We don't have acceleration and we do have x, 
x naught is zero, uh, v naught squared is zero because initially it was at zero. But we need to first find acceleration, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to use the uh, Newton's second law, so which is the summation of the forces equals to m a. So let's do that. So I have the summation of the forces on the y. Let's start with the y direction. But on the y direction, it's actually going to be equal to zero because we have no acceleration on the y direction. So this is going to be zero. And keep in mind that we chose this way to be positive. So that's going to be positive. Okay, and then here, it should be may, but we said ay is zero because we have no acceleration. Okay, so let's determine. So we have n, which is in my y direction, and I have minus the weight times cosine theta, and that's equal to zero. So I have n is equal to the weight cosine theta. So let's keep this as equation one, and let's keep solving. Now the second equation, we have the summation of the forces on the x direction is equal to max. Now we picked this to be our positive sign. So here we're going to actually use this equals to these forces. So I have max, and this is going to be positive, my acceleration, because that's the sign we picked. And that's why I like to pick wherever my acceleration is, the positive sign, because that way it's easier. So I don't have to worry about the negative. A lot of people would forget negative acceleration if we picked it the other way. So this way it just works for me. Just pick whatever works for you and stick with it. Okay, so I have max is equal to, now I need to determine the forces. So we have the friction force, which is minus, because it's going the opposite direction. So I have minus the friction force. But then I have plus the weight times sine theta, positive, because it's going the uh, positive direction. And uh, I think that's all we have. Okay, so I have max. Let's rewrite this. So the friction force is equal to what? Mu times n, correct? Now n, we said it's equal to the weight times cosine theta. So let's just substitute that. So I have minus. Now we weren't giving the weight, we were giving the mass. So we need to actually do m times g for us to calculate the weight times cosine theta plus mg times sine theta. Let's uh, re arrange it a little bit just so it's easier for us when we calculate. So let's factor out mg. So I have minus mu cosine theta plus sine theta. Now mass cancels out. So now I have ax is equal to 9.81 times minus 0 0.2 times cosine theta, which is 36.9 plus sine of 36.9. So Plug this in your calculator and you will get 4.32 meters per second squared. So this is our acceleration. So now that we found acceleration, we can go back to this equation and calculate for our velocity at B. Now before we do that, I just want to say one more thing, guys. So here, note how I picked my coordinate system to be inclined with the uh, surface that was given to us. Now you could use this coordinate system, if you do that, you're going to have to break down n into two components. So this is going to be your weight, right? Pulling down. Now n is going to have two components and then same thing with the friction force. You're going to have to break it. It's just going to take you a lot more time. You should get the same answer either way, but I usually prefer this way because it's much faster and easier. Well, the only component that we usually need to break down is just the weight that has two components. If you use this method where this is your actual coordinate system, this is your y and this is your x, then you're going to need to break n as the friction force and even the acceleration. That's just how I usually do it. Okay, so let's now do the second part of this problem. Okay guys, so let's a little bit analyze these equations. So we could use this first equation, but the thing is, it would give us the velocity at B, V naught, initially the velocity at A is zero because that's where we're starting. A naught we have, but then T, we need to find time, right? To find time, we need to use the second equation for us to calculate the time. But if we use the third equation, 
we don't need to find calculate time. So it will be faster and you will save us time. So we would end up using just one equation and we would just solve for VB. So let's write the equation. So we have V squared is equal to V naught squared plus 2A naught times S minus S naught. Now, some books uh, determine S as X. It's just really the distance. They're the same thing. Now, S naught is zero because at A, we started at point A, which is pretty much zero. There's no distance. S, which is at B, is was given 20. Between A and B, we were given this distance is 20 meters. Now, A naught, we found it, it's 4.32. V naught is zero, again, because we started at A and there was no velocity, it's zero. And then uh, we have V squared, and that's what we're trying to find, which is at B. So let's plug in the numbers, and then we can just plug in uh, the rest in our calculator. So I have 2 times 4.32, this is meters per second squared, times my S, which is 20 meters. So I have VB is equal to the square root of 2 times 4.32 meters per second squared times 20 meters which equals to 13 meters per second. And that's your answer. Okay guys, so let me know if you wanna see more of these type of problems in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and make sure you share with your friends who might find it helpful. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you soon. A la prochaine.